Hello, everyone. My name is Yuri Tsakovic. I'm from Croatia, and I'm happy to join you again for another webinar in our series from our water loss specialist group. So for today and for this webinar, I prepared a presentation regarding digital transformation of water utilities. But let's say from a, from a specific point of view that's regarding our water loss management approach we have. And um, so what's interesting regarding water loss management? Well, data. I mean, we have data everywhere. And uh, with digital transformation, actually, we have opportunity to understand the data we have, to collect the data, and uh, make a meaning out of this data. And uh, at the end, we want to make uh, proper decisions uh, following this data that is um, needed and helpful for our water loss uh, management. And as you can see from this picture, this older picture has now 15, 16 years, but uh, very nicely presents uh, actually the various activities we do and it's needed actually in a proper water utility management. And as I like to say, everything you do in water uh, utility actually has some relations uh, later with water losses. So that means from the network design up to uh, network uh, creation and building and then later to network maintenance. And today's technology is actually uh, give us opportunity to aggregate all the data to one place and then make uh, additional, or let's say added value out of this collected data. And uh, so why digital transformation? Well, as I said, added value from data can help us in better serving our customers and their expectations. Of course, we can protect uh, our water or let's say our source and nature as a whole. Then very important that these networks that are becoming bigger and bigger every day uh, becomes quite important actually these, these issues re related with asset management and of course we want to improve uh, daily operations of water utilities uh, just shortly about customers expectations of course we need to improve our quality of service and security of water water supply also uh, people are becoming more aware of the of the let's say importance of, of proper service so we need to manage their complaints in a fast and, and a proper way. Uh, people today expect to have individual approach and modern technologies can help us in this. And uh, one thing that I see still missing, uh, even in the most advanced solutions is uh, education that could be improved uh, toward our customers. I can say from, from my point of view, one, one interesting detail, but uh, I know from, let's say, from my point of view and from Croatian, uh, let's say, Croatia, from Croatia as a country, uh, most of the people actually don't understand that what they buy is not water, but service. And, and it's interesting that, that uh, people don't understand it even today, that actually water is free, but to get water to your house actually is a service and it requires um, uh, certain uh, work materials uh, and dedication from both utility companies. And this is what people buy or actually what they pay. Of course, as I said, water protection is quite important and the data should serve. And of course, digital technologies can help. Asset management is, uh, I would say that everything we do today actually ends up in asset management later. So whatever we do, whatever we create, and here in this presentation, I will give its emphasis on, on, on data importance and what we do with this data. Uh, asset management is at the end the most important thing because if you look from the point of view of the leak detection and the losses management, understanding network, knowing network, knowing data, ends up actually in a proper decision making regarding asset management. Uh, another thing that is quite important uh, regarding digital transformation is actually how it affects people, uh, our processes in water utility companies, and what 
role play technology in it. And this is a very nice picture from Zagreb uh, and Zagreb water utility in Croatia. You can see, you know, repair work on one leak. Uh, and uh, these are our, let's say, everyday uh, activities and people managing them. And as you can see, one gentleman in blue has a tablet in his hands and he is using modern technologies to actually record uh, uh, works uh, that has been done. And uh, when we see the aspect of, of digital transformation and how it looks like from the water utility side, you see the many, many, let's say, uh, elements or components important in, in understanding network, net, managing network, and of course, digitalizing and uh, uh, gathering data and understanding data. So if we start, let's say from the left side, so we know GIS and billing systems, we have understanding regarding network infrastructure and clients. We use different sensors for real-time measurements or for some historical analysis. We have SCADA systems for monitoring and operations. We have data and information regarding a network operation and customer service behavior. And of course, we have computer management maintenance systems and uh, different systems for databases regarding our assets and clients. But what's very important with all these technologies is that we need a platform that will unite these data and give us added value. Because what we have uh, in many utilities today is actually that all of these different, let's say, departments are like silos. So they have separate uh, data, they have separate understandings, and only the most advanced and best utilities actually are trying to connect these uh, different silos to one uh, data platform that then can bring them actually, let's say, added value and added understanding uh, of, of network behavior and, of course, assist in decision making. Here is also another very nice uh, representation of this let's say process that we are living now and that means how to uh, if, uh, how to transfer informations about physical assets in something called digital twin and uh, of course we have different uh, paths in this transition from engineering uh, informations like drawings models and uh, other informations then we have daily operations and data related with these daily operations and operations in the system and of course information about the system itself so the point is actually to create a digital copy of our water supply system and then the, this digital copy help us in uh, operational insights maintenance planning emergency preparedness and response and capital planning and improvements in our network so what is the final outcome of digital transformation? Well, I was looking for different definitions, but as I see it from my point of view, and when I see from the point of, let's say, understanding regarding water loss management, uh, what we have at the end is actually, we need better understanding. And as I put it, this definition down, it's like digital water utility actively plans, creates, consolidates, and uses information every day for timely and effective decision making. So actually, let's say the outcome of our digital transformation should be understanding that we need better judgment, better decisions, and uh, everything, let's say, directed to our goals and desired changes. How to make successful digital transformation? Well, uh, from my experience, and I started actually from water loss management, uh, I remember words uh, heard by, uh, let's say, or, or, or giving me by Alan Lambert many years ago, when he said, you need three person in any utility if you want to make a change regarding water loss management. And the interesting thing, same uh, remains, let's say, as a rule also for digital transformation. We also need three persons. We need top management uh, who understands the, the importance and, and, and purpose of digital change. But as well, we need two other persons in the water utility 
let's say a middle manager who will understand vertically and connect actually what we want to achieve and we need someone on the top, let's say on the bottom uh, people who are doing things on field and actually creating uh, visible change through their daily activities and uh, <clears throat> this is very interesting because i saw many projects over the years in water loss management that are related with digitalization from gis softwares to scala systems telemetry systems and uh, now we have advanced systems for pressure monitoring and of course at the end asset management but usually these solutions came from the top let's say the strategic decision in the company was that we need to uh, implement certain new technologies but this was not uh, let's say welcomed or, 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 well, or well received by the people at the bottom and usually a reason was that they were forced to use let's say new tools and new applications without their influence on 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 them uh, and how they work and how they perform uh, what i saw that is very important is actually to include your own people in in solutions creation and uh, i was i will show you at the end very nice example from one project in croatia where we actually achieved this we offered people at the bottom to say it in this way uh, to to be co-creators of digital solutions and 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 we had very very nice outcomes uh, from this approach uh, also what is important is that you start with fast and simple pilot projects we need learning and uh, we need adaptation and uh, and very important is actually that uh, certain steps need to be made actually if you want to uh, grow up to be digital water utility of course partnership with solution providers is necessary and as i see from other literature that is uh, dealing or let's say analyzing uh, examples of digital transformation very important is to understand that this is not a project based but actually this is this is a this is a continuous process of changing water utility and adapting to, to circumstances to the changes in technology and so on uh, one thing that helped me a lot in, uh, in digital transformation activities is use of change management methodology. And I use it very successful in water loss management projects, and I see it very efficient as well in digital transformation projects. So what is changing through digital transformation? Uh, well, I, I, I can show with this with this nice photo actually um, uh, two sides of this change one thing is what we usually see and these are technologies we use for our activities but what we don't see below the surface is actually the change is much bigger and much more important related with people and their behavior knowledge culture skills and procedures how they operate so have this in mind when you go with digital transformation, actually, the technology is just a tool. And uh, it's also actually working in water loss management helped me a lot as well, because I learned a very good lessons regarding the successful water loss management. Because also we have various technologies regarding leak detection and measurements, but actually people are the key, let's say, ingredient if you want successful water loss management. And the same thing is here. Digital transformation brings a lot of change, challenges. And uh, here is a very nice research by uh, Global Water Intelligence. And uh, you can see some concerns from uh, water utility managers, what they see as the biggest challenge uh, in, uh, in their adaptation of digital transformation. And as you can see, top on the top is concerns about cybersecurity, and we understand the importance of it and uh, how it can be, um, uh, let's say, dangerous if you do some things uh, without, without understanding uh, issues of security. 
But second below is stuff resistance. And this is very important from my point of view, uh, because people need to understand why they are changing. And, uh, and especially in water utilities, this issue is, 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 is specific and important because what utilities and people in utilities are conservative in way of thinking regarding changes. And we knew that also from water loss management projects, you know, they are always, you know, on defense side when you propose certain, certain changes, like, for example, DMAs and, uh, and pressure management. And so we needed a lot of, let's say, time and effort to convince them why this is important for them. And, uh, and uh, what, I, what I used, let's say, in my, exam, is my projects and examples and experience, I, I always try to explain to people in, in water loss management that the life will be easier. You know, you will have better knowledge uh, where the leaks are. You will know how to act uh, in a preventive way to, to reduce number of bursts and, and so on. And, so this is what's also important regarding digital technologies, because usually we like to be, let's say, uh, in a way of thinking, oh, we need to be innovative. We need to, you know, uh, be advanced uh, digital technologies. Everybody are doing it and so on. But people don't find themselves actually uh, inside of that. What's inside, uh, let's say, what's in for them, you know? And usually if digital technologies are too complex, this could be very dangerous actually, and you can lose momentum and actually your projects could fail. There are many other, many other aspects and challenges, but my, my let's say most important thing I see is the staff resistance. So why digital transformation fails? Because most of them fail. And you can see very interesting research I found on the internet, it says that 78% of, of companies fail to implement their digital transformation initiatives. And uh, when you see where is the biggest number, why they fail, it's interesting. They see that organizational structure is not, let's say, proper for what they want to do, or they have bad governance. But you see as well technology issues, communication channels. So, it's important to know actually the majority of digital transformation projects actually fail. And I think they fail mostly because we don't think enough about people. One helpful, let's say, representation of digital transformation and their requirements uh, is this very nice picture. I, I find it on the internet. Actually, it collects three most important elements, this is strategy, technology, and culture, and they how they combine. And what happens if you miss some parts out of the out of the picture. So this could be helpful for, for those of you who will actually plan tomorrow uh, digital transformation projects and have some uh, influence on on managing them. Regarding data as a value process, and this is a very nice understanding, let's say also, why do we need to digitize our, our operations? And um, as well, you can see at the bottom, we have data creation from various sources. But then what we need on the upper level is actually data management. So we start to understand this data in a way that we collect them, what is asset management, we need to clean certain data out of elements that are not needed or wrong. Then we start to create uh, databases, structure of data, storage, and so on. But later, the next level above is making sense out of data. So we create models. We have big data analysis, analytics, data mining, mining and, 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 and similar. And on the top is actually decision making. As I said uh, earlier, data needs to serve to our better decision making. And that means that we have tools for that support us in these decision making. We have optimization algorithms or certain types of automatization and machine learning. And this is a this is a circle. This is a wheel. So we improve our decisions. We learn something out of that, and then we go back 
and make everything better. So this is a, a daily and let's say continuous process where we from the bottom, we have a lot of data, but we actually decrease the volume of data and increase value of data. And this is how uh, we think and uh, this is how digital transformation should function. How to support this digital transformation? Uh, here is also very interesting and simple visualization of our roadmap uh, in changes as well. It's a very nice material from, from, from UK done by uh, company Gemini. And uh, as you can see, they have, let's say, a couple of tracks that are very important in understanding what we are doing. So from our approach, what we are doing and, and uh, uh, what it means, how we govern our change. We need, it, we need some kind of, of type of standardization. I still see here as well some, some, uh, some examples in very nice correlation between water loss management and digital transformation because we did the same things as well. And you see, we have enablers and we govern, or let's say, after all, we make some change. And just to make a relation with water loss management, for example, standardization, we had our IWA water balance and governance, we had certain leading, for example, with water loss specialist group. And we had certain approach regarding water loss management, what needs to be done first, second, or third. We had enablers as well in our road. So that means who helped us and who was important in supporting us. For example, in large projects, it was supported by the international financial organizations or on a local national level, we have legislation and so on. And then we have change as a process itself. So I must say that my, my learning and understanding of water loss management process helped me a lot in better understanding how digital transformation should be done. Again, a very nice um, example of understanding and thinking regarding this is given in this slide where you see this process of changing and becoming digital. And you start by exploring, then you start doing something, you do different digital technologies, different digital solutions, and you should go further with becoming digital and then being a digital company. But as this warning shows, don't get stuck here, is just doing some digital things, but without becoming really a digital company. And this is what I said as well previously with, uh, with slide that showed different components of managing information in the world utility that are closed in their own silos. So if you just improve different aspects of your, of your operations or, or, or data understanding, but not combining them together, then you are not really becoming a digital water utility. Everything ends up with people. So people make a difference. And what I said uh, earlier, maybe can be just end up with one word, people need purpose. So if you want people to help you, and after all, if you want to change utility, you're changing it because of the people working there and because of our customers. So we need to create purpose. And uh, you will see from our case study at the end uh, how we created this purpose for different people and everyone contributed in the same project and the same change. Another thing that I need to emphasize is actually a big challenge we are faced with in what utilities, and it's related with trends in workforce. Uh, at least from my point of view, I'm coming from East Europe, uh, we are faced with uh, aging workforce and with the lack of uh, properly educated workforce. Because what we have now, is actually this change of generations. And uh, from one side, we are losing people, actually they got retired. And the, on the other side, working in water utilities is not anymore so attractive. So young people are actually looking for jobs and, and careers in some other markets or let's say industries. So here you have interesting data from Hungary that shows actually the lacking number of people over the years they, 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 they forecast. And as well, we have the age you know, structure 
and we see that they are becoming more, let's say, older. And I also wanted to verify this from Croatian examples. I checked many vote utilities data, and uh, I, I took one with very nice data that could be presented here. And you can see, for example, in this vote utility, they have they had let's say in 2013 178 employees and in 2019 they had 194 employees so you would say okay the number is bigger it's fine but what is changing is their age and you can see that the oldest employees actually over the years they doubled but those that are actually, let's say, the, the most important, uh, let's say, driving force in the vote utility, that means people in age between 26 and 45 years of age, actually their number dropped by 18%. And that's quite, quite a challenge, actually, if they, will pro, if they will continue in this path. Another interesting, let's say, divide and understanding regarding uh, qualifications of these people in what utility. And here, what's important, let's say these two categories are university degree education. And this is high school. As you can see, 80% of the people in what utility are actually high school education level. And uh, I think this is very important uh, for understanding who will actually be responsible for digital transformation. Because if you are creating a project as well from, for example, point of view related with water loss management, you need to understand that these are the people you are, you are dealing with if you want to become a digital water utility. So you need to have solutions, approach, and, and, uh, and budgeting and everything needed actually uh, that can be based on people who are actually uh, in this level of education. Regarding knowledge in education, I have this graph for years. This is from German agency related that is responsible for education of water and, 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 and the waste disposal activities. And um, they have a very nice overview, actually. It's not correct, but it's visually important for you to understand what's the relevance of your knowledge over time. And uh, what you can see, is actually how fast the, the volume of knowledge is changing and your need to be re-educated or let's say to, to, uh, to follow up with, with additional uh, education. As you can see, the basic school actually lasts very, very long. University already, we say that after five years, 50% of your knowledge is actually already lost in relevance and you would need to be, let's say, re educate with new technology stuff, methodologies and so on. As you can see, technical jobs every two to three years. I can only, you know, remind you, 80% of the staff in vote utilities are people with technical jobs responsibilities. And then we have technology. These are IT departments, or let's say people who are closely related with the with technologies. And uh, you can see that 50% of their knowledge already lost relevance after one year. So this is another, just another uh, reason and, and example why we need to invest constantly in our education. I have another slide. This is also an older slide from, I think, 15 years now, done by the World Bank. And uh, they took data from, let's say, good or excellent vote utilities from around the world. And they were trying to understand why they are good, you know, in general, as, as a vote utility. And what's interesting for me is actually how much they invest in training and and uh, an education of their staff. And for example, we know, and most of us are familiar with example of, for example, Singapore vote utility and how advanced they are. But you can see they, as well, even back then, they invested a lot of uh, money in training of their staff. And um, I think this is a very nice indicator, actually, if you want to understand where is your utility and how much you actually invest in your people and then what you can expect out of, out of your people in the utility. 
I must say, for example, from Croatian point of view, we are one tenth of these figures. So we still have a lot of room to actually to improve. Of course, we need people, but also we need technologies. So I'll just make a short overview of some technologies we use in Croatia and in, in, in my region. I'm quite aware that you are, let's say, visiting and following and of course, with watching different webinars and presentations from technology providers, they are quite, quite advanced, I would say. And these four pictures already are showing us, you know, we are here today. For example, you know, augmented reality of different sizes. Is it a tablet device or some health device on your head? And this is, this is quite, it looks today like, Science fiction is already here. We have a satellite uh, technologies uh, like leak detection and different other kinds of monitoring water and, and environment. And of course, we have artificial intelligence and machine learning that can help us in, in dealing with water losses and with uh, water supply the company in general. So we have that different tools for data visualization. This is one project in Croatia that uses dashboards. Uh, this is another one that follows also water network, even water loss management uh, from Slovenia as well. Very nice dashboards. This is what I, uh, what I said at the beginning. Our, our goal is actually aggregating data and then creating added value out of that. And these data visualizations and dashboards actually can, can be a very, very important aspect of it. Regarding case study I mentioned, I will show you a story from Zagreb, from Croatia, where we had two stages of very interesting activities. One was use of latest satellite technologies for leak location, and it was done in period between 2019 and 2020. And later we applied as well a cloud application for field works. Uh, and its ongoing project started in May of this year. And uh, what we had in mind is actually to include everything from uh, creating data, that means call center that receives complaints and reports about leaks. Then we had office work, you know, and let's say scheduling uh, tasks, organization of works, and then field work activities and giving data back and uh, to uh, have a pre proper understanding, statistics, and so on. And it, the whole solution was created uh, that was dedicated uh, specifically for these tasks and for this water utility. And uh, here you can see a few simple photos showing uh, how it works. Our goal is actually, or was and still is, is actually to use the smartphone, you know, the smartphone is crazy powerful device and actually everybody has it and uh, how to use it in a way that it can help daily activities. When we started Zagreb Water Utility had only paperwork and even fax machines, you know, to distribute information about what needs to be done and where. And we digitized everything in a very, very fast uh, fast way and in a very short period of time. Only one month was needed actually to digitize everything. And now we have, you know, reporting, we have data is sent to teams for emergency interventions. And if they are not able to locate the leak, then the information goes to leak detection department. Uh, they, they perform leak detection. When they are done, actually information goes to maintenance. The goal was actually that once created information in digital uh, form, doesn't have to be reported, repeated or let's say copied. And you see here, for example, so the zones and information about networks. Actually, we took existing data. We didn't create a GIS, for example, they had GIS. But GIS was closed, you know, in office that only GIS experts know how to use it and actually uh, create information or understanding. But we wanted to, what we said, we wanted to democratize these information. So we transferred everything to a simple app that works in cloud and that everybody can access through their mobile phone. Another challenge that was, um, I would say, the biggest one, and we successfully managed to, to accomplish it, was actually educate people. 
And we created a very, very simple tool that you know anybody can, can, can be trained in a very short period of time. That means maybe 15, 20 minutes is necessary. And you see, these are people, you know, these are these 80%, you know, of the water utility staff are, you know, simple people, you know, uh, technical jobs for repair works. This is a call center. Usually who works in the call center? The oldest guys, you know, who are close to be retired. They're not anymore for field work activities, but they are great, you know, to be in the call center. But they need to learn new technologies. And it was quite challenging how to create something that is quite easy for them. We had a very nice benchmark for them. We said that benchmark is how to reduce number of clicks for each report to be recorded, you know? So I think we are now somewhere around 20 clicks. It's necessary actually for all the data to be recorded. And then we had managers who are managing teams and these are field works, you know, many people are already close to be retired, but the great thing was that we asked them, what do you guys think we should do as well? You know, how to organize information, types of information, process how the information goes. So they felt, you know, that they are part of the change. And in this way, we actually reduced the, the resistance. And uh, they now understand that they are as well co-creators of something that they use every day. And it, the results were really, really great. And, uh, and, and and we had such a great spirit, you know, and, uh, and, and response from those people. And I think that's the greatest quality of the project we have done because today they are using it, you know, and, and, and we, had, we have practically no complaints. And it's amazing actually when you think that we have, I think now almost 100 people is already connected in the system and use it in the different ways. So we have from the old guys, you know, experienced one to the young ones and, and, and everybody using it. So main main purpose of the app was actually recording the leak repairs. You see, for example, water leak. And here, here was the moment. This is the location where the leak was found and so on. This is the simple process, how it works from emergency team survey. For example, during the night, they came out to see where the leak is, but they just saw the water flowing, so they couldn't do anything. Tomorrow morning, people came out with leak detection equipment and they found where the leak exactly is. And then was repair work and everything is recorded in one, one, let's say, database. And then we have even advanced analysis of data like these heat maps, like where's the biggest frequency. And this is very helpful information for later analysis regarding, for example, priorities for pipe replacements and so on. As well, we have statistics that can show us types of leaks. This is now a sea of information section that is great for further you know, analysis, for example, burst frequencies, types of materials, type of, I don't know, pavement or, 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 or traffic that is happening uh, and, and beautifully. Now you can, uh, you can work with data and understand that. And of course, uh, um, let's say technology needs to be um, uh, compatible with different uh, types of, of databases and GIS software so we have. At the end, I'm close to end, I just want to say a few things regarding this understanding of power of mobile phones and what is happening with our workforce. On the left side, you see uh, interesting uh, statistics from the European Union showing, you know, the employees with corporate device that allow mobile connection to the internet in 2019. And here is Croatia, 28% of employees. It's in average with European Union. So this gives understanding as well of our success on one side. And interesting, the United Kingdom is 29%. And, uh, but we see, for example, the best ones like Sweden, Ireland, or fine Finland. Another thing that I find it interesting as well is this uh, OSCB uh, document I found on the internet that presents the story about the relevance of, let's say, skills over time from 1960 uh, up to, okay, this document was up to 2009, but uh, interesting are uh, trends regarding what loses significance and what uh, has rising significance in works. And, uh, and you can see what 
what is rising is non-routine interpersonal, that means communication between people. And you see analytical capabilities as well arising. But everything that is routine or manual actually loses significance. So these are the trends we are facing. Uh, as well, what we need to develop is actually good what utility company uh, as a society. And here are some advices I find quite quite nice actually that present you know what is the future of work, and you see from meaningful work for employees to supported management, positive work environment, opportunities for growth and development, and trust in leadership. And I find it quite revealing actually how the utility should be organized and work. And uh, I tried as well to develop this, this approach in water loss management and have it as such in, in daily activities. Final recommendations for people. This is this nice report that you can find it on the internet is accelerating digital water utilities in 2019. And it shows interesting aspects of of people side of, of change. That means that your digital transformation should be human-centered. It's not technology-centered, it's human-centered. Then you need to have planned approach toward managing change. You should have clear and a compelling, compelling vision for transformation. People need to see themselves in that. Then you should have some kind of stuff engaging metrics. It can be helpful for understanding and dealing with gaps and resistance. You should create teams led by influential people from the business, but not from IT. It's a very interesting remark. And I could say as well, for example, to go back to Zagreb Water Utility example, actually we didn't cooperate with the IT department. We, de we developed everything cooperating with the maintenance department. And everything works. And now the IT department enjoys. Oh, it's so easy. You know, okay, we understand it. It's better this way. So you need the feedback, continuous feedback from staff and understanding what they what they need. And we need training and education. We need it constantly. Uh, we have very nice materials to learn from. Uh, IWA published in 2019 very nice starting brochure, digital water. And a couple of more later in, in, in last years, and you can access them to, in this address. I also created another document this year. It's in Croatian language because many employees in water utilities do not understand language, English language. As I said, 80% of our staff are high school level education. Those people are not familiar with English in a way that it's fluent, that they can read fast and so on. So I decided to create for them a separate document that is in Croatian language. We then have with Smart Aqua as a solution. Uh, we have promotion channel as well on YouTube and with many webinars we have done over last year and a half, uh, promoting digital transformation, showing examples, case studies. And, uh, and this way we also promote in our region, actually, what we do. And at, at the end, for those of you who are viewing us on this webinar, or maybe later on YouTube, join IWA. It's a great crowd, so you're more than welcome. And next year, we have water loss conference in Prague, in Czech Republic, and uh, come up or you will be online, there is no idea. So this is it, thank you very much. Thank you, Yuri. A very interesting presentation and lots of um, interesting areas of discussion, I think, and hopefully we can get some questions from, from the audience. Uh, if anybody has any questions, they can write them in the uh, chat function below, or maybe you can unmute yourself and ask the question as well, if that interests you as well. I was quite interested, Yuri, where the GWI um, research showed that cybersecurity was the number one uh, concern amongst uh, water utilities because I, I remember maybe 10 years ago when working with I2O water that cloud computing was something that we tried to convince utilities to move towards 
Um, but I thought it had changed. I thought utilities were more open now to cloud computing and, and cybersecurity. Um, and it would be also be interesting to see how that has changed since 2019, whether this COVID lockdown situation has actually changed people's impressions of cybersecurity and whether they're more willing to go cloud computing. Yeah, we need to ask people in the GWI. <laughs> but yeah, it was interesting. I think I, I see it from, from, from my point of view. Uh, for example, uh, government uh, issued even uh, special guidelines for cybersecurity. Okay, for the moment, they, they, they selected only the, the bigger water utilities, but they have special guidelines regarding cybersecurity. So they take this issue quite seriously. And uh, uh, this is then in, let's say it's easy to understand when we say, for example, one thinking I have over the years, cloud computing. In our utilities, when you say, you guys, you know, we will transfer everything to the cloud. And usually what they say, but we wanted to have it on our servers, you know? And this was, you know, even when GIS started, I would say, let's say, okay, then we didn't have the cloud computing 20 years ago. But uh, even today they want to have, let's say data or storage in their premises, this is this is preference they have. So, cybersecurity is serious. They see it from from other places, and after all, water supply is quite sensitive. So, you need to be, uh, let's say, on a, on a more 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 let's say more aware of it. Yeah, I suppose it's making sure that the the software you use or the platforms they're on are secure rather than just accepting any platform that's offered to you by the by the solution provider yeah yeah that's true and and as they are from other aspects and the experiences we have this you know this conservative approach from what utilities you know mm -hmm. like there are in other issues you know I can say always from my point of view, when I go somewhere and I say, you know, this is new, you know, it's interesting, it works, okay, we covered all the bases, but they say, they always like, the next, first next question is, uh, is this work somewhere in some other water utility? <laughs> <laughs> it was also interesting, you were talking about um, digital twinning, and this is, seems to be a bit of a, a buzzword in the digital community and it's it always because I, I i used to do hydraulic modeling when i was when i first started working in in the water industry so i understand how hydraulic models work and the calibration of those models and i just wonder how many utilities out there have enough uh, information in terms of how accurate their GIS is and how much flow and pressure data they have coming back to actually make a digital twin that that accurate? I don't know what you think. I don't think we are still at the level that we have, let's say, digital twin of system that operates. We, we are still in majority, I would say, you know, 80, 90% of the water utilities are still just creating digital twin as a copy of the, let's say, assets they have but not really of, of functioning systems and uh, from one side as you mentioned gis story and how accurate gis is i see a part of the problem uh, in this approach we had previously that looked at gis as a separate department that will deal with, with information about the network and then of course it's closed you know uh limited number of people does this work okay they have a high accuracy of what they do because they are you know educated and uh, usually people with university degree and they have great accuracy about the data but most but many parts of the network are not covered at all you know even with the with basic information about about what we have and uh, what i think it's quite good and what we have, for example, in, in my case, in a couple of other projects we are running now, is that we help actually 
these people who are every day at fields, you know, in field work in daily maintenance, uh, how they could be educated and to use simple uh, tools uh, to create every day, you know, data that could be, you know, integrated into a GIS system. And then you get, okay, it's not 100% correct, but I have, let's say, 90 or 80% correct data, but for almost everything in the network. And, uh, and these sensors, and uh, just to, to finish, regarding the digital twinning of the system that works, we are still not here. We still need a lot more data. That means more sensors, more IoT solutions that can feed the system uh, and that can then make and run simulations, hydraulic simulations. Yeah, I think if you're confident up to 97, 98%, then you're probably going to have quite a good digital twin of your system. But I, I just feel that many utilities are not that high. They must be down at 70, 80% at, at, at best. And that, that would just make those twins quite yeah. inaccurate and quite dangerous, I'd have thought. Yeah, I, mean, I don't see them still as something that you need to rely on. And a uh, thing that we are dealing with as well, what I see now, for example, I, I, I spoke last, for example, in the last couple of these online conferences, uh, with people, for example, with, from Singapore and from other utilities, quite advanced water utilities. And I, I had a very simple question, you know, uh, okay, guys, you have so many things working there, you know, sun sensors and, uh, and remote monitoring. And tell me, please, how many of these stuff doesn't work every day? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then they start laughing, you know, like you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. The average number I got is about 5%, you know, and this is a lot, you know, because if you have in mind, you know, the thousands of locations of measuring something and you have 5% doesn't work every day. So there's a lot of work. Mm, I think 5% is quite good, actually. I've seen some <laughs> work a lot higher than that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about the best ones. <laughs> <laughs> We could invent, you know, we could have another indicator, you know, like, like, you know, for, uh, for example, for apparent losses, you know, we say 5%, guy, you know, it's really, you can imagine two, but you are really five. And the same thing could be a new indicator for how many things doesn't work every day. Put it mm. five. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you've got like flow meters or data loggers, because yeah, when, yeah. when they go wrong, people just take time to buy new ones and, and replace them. It's not something can be fixed overnight, really. No, no, mm. no, it's quite demanding. So from one side, we are changing our world. Uh, but on the other side, it's this, this issue of maintaining everything. And uh, IT, maintaining IT is quite an issue. And uh, this mm. needs to be properly understood at the very beginning. I see this, for example, uh, in Croatia. I don't know other places, but I would say from Eastern Europe. You know, we got, for example, funding from outside. For example, European Union is funding, you know, improvements in water supply systems. And this is dangerous because then people in water utilities, since they don't really understand IT and they just started, you know, with all these advanced technologies, uh, they think, oh, you know, it, someone is buying for us this, so we will take it the best, you know, because, you know, now it's the opportunity to buy. And they don't understand, you know, how much it costs actually to maintain this later. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is not paid by the outside financing. So this is dangerous. So people need to be aware of digital technologies. My, my opinion and my experiences start with simple and, uh, and grow over time. And I think this is where you were talking about the dashboards that manage all of that, all of that data. It's key that those dashboards can actually not just manage the, uh, the sensors that are working, but also the ones that are not working as well, because yeah. uh, you need to identify them as quickly as possible, but even estimate data for when they're not working. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, yeah, I I I, I agree, uh, and uh, especially uh, I I am developing, I am helping with, with uh, these people who are uh, responsible for digital solutions, 
And uh, I say to them, you know, I would like on the dashboard all those devices that don't work, you know. <laughs> I want them as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it is, you know, uh, what I like, for example, I saw in, uh, as I presented, uh, you know, don't let IT people lead the digital transformation because their point of view is quite different from, from those, you know, in maintenance. And they, 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 you know, you know how we, we have this saying when you don't see the tree from the forest, you know, and mm. then the other way around, it depends what's the issue. Um, I like the, the approach where we develop solutions for, uh, for, you know, everyday people. You know? If they find it useful and they find themselves, you know, part of the solution, then it's great because then you really have, you know, then you are becoming digital in a way that it, do, it doesn't have to be high tech. You just need to be that we are all collaborating uh, properly and efficiently. And it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's too idealistic if you come up with too complex solutions. And then, uh, you know, it's, it's like a car, you know, I, I like saying, you know, if you are just a beginner's driver, you cannot sit in a Ferrari, you know, it's, it's, it's useful. <laughs> and with the dashboard, I know you were talking about standardization of dashboards, but it just seems to me that there are so many companies out there that are developing some form of dashboard and even utilities that go and try to develop something themselves and then sell it. And I, I just find that there's just so many options out there that it must be difficult for utilities to actually decide which way to, which path to go down in terms of which solution to go for, or for even for companies that are that are making dashboard solutions to actually convince utilities or, or to get it to work. Yeah, yeah that's true. But I, I say that, you know, even uh, you need to understand, or, or let's say uh, end user, support utility, they need to understand that digital transformation is a process. Mm. And that's, that's, that's challenging from one side. For example, if someone is offering you, you know, I, my dashboard system can do so many things, but you are not, it's like, it's like dealing with, I don't know, with children, you know, as I said, with Ferrari, with the same thing, you need some uh, stages in your, in, in your development, you know, start with basic things. The same thing is with the dashboard. It's not proper actually that you have, uh, you know, a huge amount of information that you really don't know what to do with them, you know, and uh, you don't have people who understand them. Uh, so you're actually paying for something that you don't need. So, you know, uh, investment is high or something you don't know what to do. And um, so this needs to be, uh, you need to have a balance. And uh, mm, as I said, also mentioned in my presentation, you need to understand that digital transformation is a process. And that's a problem when you're buying something because you think you're buying it as a project. You know, I want solution for this. And, uh, and then uh, you, you stepped out of the, actually of the proper process of changing. And changing is, I have stages that I need to go through. And it would be easier, you know, give me a simple dashboard, with basic understanding of what I, this is like what you what you said with uh, with the digital twin uh, for hydraulics for example I saw a few examples here in my region as well uh, but you know they don't have enough uh, first of all the, the GIS is not correct the other thing you know they don't have enough sensors in the network and the mm -hmm. third thing the, the the water meters of the customers don't have um, uh, let's say proper system of data, data gathering and sending. So you have incomplete components and then you want to collect them into one, one, uh, one space. It will not work. And then you get disappointed. Oh, this doesn't work. Of course it doesn't work. It's not ready. <laughs> you need to grow, you know, other elements to, to have it. And uh, this is for what we have done in Zagreb, for example, with this digital field work 
uh, it's a huge, huge amount of data every day. It's a big system, three and a half thousand kilometers, 850,000 people. You know, it's a huge system, really a lot of information every day. But our idea was actually, let's create a very solid, basic, you know, foundation for data creation, you know, from field activities and feed it every day. And now guys at, on the upper levels will think about how to get or extract information and added value from it. And usually it doesn't work there, did that way. I saw, you know, oh, this is how we will do it. And you need to accept this application and fill in the data as we say to you. And mm -hmm. then those guys who are creating data, they said, no, we will not work, you know, the same salary, you know, I already have enough work. And, and I don't care, you know. And, and what we have done, for example, it's amazing what we have done, for example, as an outcome, some comments of people, you know, now using this digital tool. It is a very simple thing. I said, I like to joke. I say, guys, I need only one finger and one eye. You know, I don't need two eyes. You know? <laughs> one eye is enough. And, and what they say now is, for example, what they like out of, this is when we have a purpose. Digital transformation, Everybody need to uh, recognize themselves inside of it, but you know, actually it's a different. For example, for people on the bottom, what they liked from digital transformation, they said, finally, we see who is working and who is not working. Now, it's interesting, you know, mm -hmm. you think, oh, we need a better quality of data. No, but for most of them was, they were annoyed, you know, by some guys who actually don't do their job properly, you know. And now we see, now you cannot hide yourself now. Now we know where you've done it, you know, what you have done, you know, how many jobs you have done over the week or a month and so on. No, and, and this was their purpose, for example, not we are creating some data and some other aspects as well. Okay, thank you very much, Yuri. That was um, a very interesting hour and a lot of good conversations there. And, um, uh, goodbye to everybody and we'll see you at our last webinar which is next week and uh, before we finish for the year thank you yuri thank you very much thank you for everyone